Hey guys, welcome back. Richard B. Simmons here with you in the Sea of Profit community. Hope you're doing amazing. Tonight I'm amped up, I'm excited, and I've got a lot that I want to really share with you tonight. A lot of great things that have been going on, and uh, just so much, honestly, to share with you. Um, I've been in California for the last uh, week and a half and had some really amazing times with the Lord. So tonight, I want to share with you a little bit about the title, Seers and, and Millionaires, even uh, Multimillionaires. What do they have in common? A lot of people are like, you know, what do they have in common? That's a good question tonight I want to share with you. You know, I want to start out tonight that as I was making this journey to California, as, I, as this was coming on, this was led on by the Lord. It didn't make a lot of sense to me. So many times, guys, things aren't going to make sense to you. But remember, that's the natural thinking, right? That's what we're naturally thinking when really we need to be led by the Spirit. So uh, as part of your seer prophetic anointing, you know, you're going to get things from the Spirit. Uh, you're going to have, you know, visions being dreams. Sometimes you'll have visions during the day where you'll see things. Other times it'll be by your senses. You may smell something. You may taste something. You may touch. You know, there's so many things. Uh, when I say touch, experience touch. You know, I've experienced the Lord touching me before, angels touching me before, uh, experienced smelling things before, tasting, tasting things before. So, you know, I'm telling you, you're going to create your own vocabulary with God. That's the beautiful part about it. But tonight, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what led me to California and how it unfolded in so many ways. Amen. Let this be an encouragement for you tonight. So right now, just put the blood of Jesus over each of us, over this broadcast. Amen. And uh, just the, the fire of God. And we thank God for what he's doing. All right. So see us. Check it out. Uh, the Lord began to, to really work with me on going to California. And I went to uh, start preparing to go on the first, and I had uh, angels here at the house. Literally, angels appeared at the house, uh, two of them. One started out as a small purple angel, and then another huge red angel uh, appeared here and began to, uh, to move through uh, uh, an area outside my window. And it was cool. For about 45 minutes, I was uh, entertaining the angels, amen, and not idolizing or worshiping. We don't do that, but at the same time, they're messengers of God. They're they're sent to help us, amen. So that was really cool to to have them here and have them helping us, uh, you know, in in what we're doing. Glory to God. So let me just go ahead and, and share a little bit with you tonight uh, on on these angels and on the, what happened in California. So I see the angels out there. They're ministering to me, and it shows me what. It, 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 it hits me and I know God's doing something. Why? Nothing happens for no reason. So I always ask the Holy Spirit, what's going on here? What's happening here? You know, is there something I need to be aware of? Is there something, you know, going on? on. What, what, what is, is taking, taking place, place here, Lord? Lord? Because, because nothing, nothing happens, happens for no reason. reason. That, that very, very thing, thing could be uh, the smell. You may smell like Rose of Sharon, which is in the Bible. You know, you may smell vanilla fresh bread. These are all, they all have biblical uh, associations. Amen. You may smell these things. You may taste things. Some may taste wine, you know, some may taste, um, you know, metal. Amen. I mean, it sounds crazy and strange, but you're going to develop your vocabulary with God. That's going to lead you to deeper places. How? By spending that time journaling these things down and really allowing the Holy Spirit uh, to begin to fulfill that um, vocabulary. Amen? Okay. So as I'm, as I'm entertaining the angels of the Lord on November the 1st here, I took note. <clears throat> wow. One, uh, or rather, 11, one, 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 11, November 1. Well, I've been seeing 111 for so long. Now, a lot of this went back, I, th I believe, to uh, Revelation 111. But nonetheless, it was another sign from God. God was speaking through it. Amen. So as a seer, I was taking note of this thing. So I said, all right, Lord, you're doing something amazing. I had an expectancy. Even though the enemy will come and try to chip that off and push you away from it, don't let him do that. Stay with that expectancy of God. Amen. And let him guide you to the path where you need to go. So with that said, we now go forward and uh, November comes, November 2 comes around. Now, that's the day uh, I'm to travel over to California. <clears throat> and that was a fabulous day of travel. 
made my way over to California. Really, I'm not real sure what God's going to do there yet. I was just moving by what the Spirit of God said. As I make my way into this place called um, San Luis Obisco, uh, uh, just about 30 miles away from uh, Santa Maria, California, we're coming in to, to land, and I begin to notice the coastline, this beautiful coastline, but all of this mountainous uh, ranges and just a lot of land. And I see what I'm seeing. I remember I'm taking note now. I feel a, a pulling, a sensing to something, and I see all this going on. And I, so I'm like, okay, Lord, what is this? Holy Spirit, what's happening? And he began to show me some parts had vegetation, you know, growing. That was the green parts. Other parts were just brown dirt. Nothing was happening there. And uh, strangely, this man next to me on the plane uh, speaks up, you know, he just kind of speaks up and he says, you know, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to some meetings. I said, you know, I wasn't fully sure what the Lord was doing yet. And he says, yeah, he starts telling me about the area. And he says, this area, <clears throat> he says, you know, this area, a lot of this is vineyards. Wow. Grab that guys. Vineyards, the Holy Spirit, the vine, Jesus, the father. I mean, it's really coming alive. Vineyards. I'm like, yeah, cool. Then he starts, you know, and, I, and I'm taking note because why? Some parts are totally green and fulfilling. They're luscious. They're beautiful. But other parts have nothing. There's nothing growing there. There's nothing growing there. This is so prophetic. This is so prophetic because we've got to be on the vine with the Father. Amen. We've got to be with Jesus. Hallelujah. There's so many that aren't today, but they're coming in Jesus' name. All right. So he, this man continues to tell me, he says, you know, uh, I, I want to tell you, you know, this, this town, it, it, it has a major college and it has a prison. That's the main thing. And I thought, that's really interesting. So we have vineyards, we have a prison, and we have this Christian college. How wild is that? I mean, start putting this stuff together. Now I'm asking the Lord, but he's showing me all these different things. And I'm like, man, this is an anointed land. That's what I was getting from the Spirit, was I was entering an anointed land. Boy, I don't know if you guys can feel this, but the anointing of the Lord is just filling the room right now as we're talking about this. Wow. Praise, Praise the, the living, living God. God. Praise, Praise the, the living, living God. God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So I make my drive. I get the rental car, and I make my drive, and check this out. The first main street that I'm going down, what is it? Church Street. Church Street, putting all this together, it's really like, wow, God. And then there's the next street I go on for the, the straightaway to Santa Maria. It's called Church Valley. And I'm thinking, man, look at everything God is lining up. <clears throat> See, what am I trying to say to you guys as I come up to these millionaires I was hanging out with and all these great things that they're doing? Because these were Christians, you guys. I'm going to tell you the whole story. i got to get through the front end of this, but I'm going to tell you the whole story. But I'm going to tell you, God was lining things up to his kingdom. He's showing us that we've got to do it his way, not our way. Amen? We've got to do it his way. So many times we want to do it our way, but being led by the Spirit, being a seer with that seer prophetic anointing, amen, we want to be led by him. We want to spend time with him. We want to take note of the things he's showing us daily because he's speaking in so many ways. He's speaking in so many ways. Glory to God. I get to Santa Maria, I go and check into my hotel. This hotel happened to be right up against an airport. I mean, literally right up against an airport. And as I go in and I check into the hotel and I go to my room, I'm, I'm in room 414. Now, the numbers stand out to me. So naturally, what am I going to do as a seer, guys? What are you going to do as a seer? You're going to be like, Lord, what are you showing me here? Amen. Because we want everything God has to speak to us. Amen. So 414. Well, four, you know, this is the four corners of earth, the power of God, one God. Amen. And, and four, he was really speaking to me in that. But add those together. 414 is nine. There are nine gifts of the spirit, nine fruits. The, you know what I mean? We want to be fruitful. He's showing me the vines coming into this place. So he's adding all this up. But greater than that, some of you know I'm a, a, a private pilot. I fly the airplanes around for fun, not for professional. But I look out my window, and what do I see? Three planes lined up in a row, the last one being a Learjet. 
Woo! Three is the number of what? That's right. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Now, I'm looking out there, and these planes are speaking to me. Not literally saying, hey, Richard, but by the Lord, it's a sign. It's God showing you things are lining up for something he's doing. My expectancy is coming up. Greater, Greater things, things are, are rising. And, and I'm, I'm like, like wow, wow, God, God you're, you're literally, literally doing, doing something, something here in my life. Amen? So we need that expectancy, you guys. We need that expectancy. So that night I spent some time with the Lord. There was some warfare going on in this time and things like that, but we're not paying attention to the warfare. We're paying attention to God because typically when the warfare tries to rise up, that's the enemy trying to bump us away from something that God's doing. That means we're at a breakthrough. So always put our focus on God, amen, because these things, um, you know, we're emitting out positive or negative, amen? So we need our faith. We need to trust God because it's literally, we're shining for God. You've seen somebody before where they're looking all depressed. Oh, woe is me. I don't know anymore. Guys, that's not God. He said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I shall rejoice. I shall be glad. Hallelujah. That's what he said. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So guys, we need to hold that place in that joy. Hallelujah. We need to have our joy in him. We need to keep our peace in him. Amen. Remember, hold your peace. I'll fight for you. In other words, we are staying positive, not just to try to look some way to somebody. But guys, when you're looking all down and all this kind of stuff and not trusting God, the enemy smells it. He sees it. Okay. So we want to keep our trust and faith in the Lord. We want to trust him and follow him. Not the natural circumstances, but by what he's showing us, which does include every aspect of our senses. And that's something I'm really trying to share with you guys today is our senses. So many times we discard the natural senses and we can't do that. Sure, we have dreams. We have visions. Um, you know, we, we hear the, the small, still voice of the spirit, but we cannot discard the things like I was telling you earlier, the smell, maybe a smell of bread. Amen. Maybe the smell of, of, um, Roses, you know, can be a lot of things. You're going to write your own uh, book of, of what the Lord is showing you. Amen. And that's the beauty thing for your life. <clears throat> Let's progress. What have I shown you so far? Things are lining up. I'm paying attention to the Lord. I'm paying attention to what he's showing and I'm acknowledging it. I'm interacting with him. Amen. As part of being uh, somebody that's a seer, prophetic person, you may be a seer prophet. Not everybody's a prophet. You may be prophetic, but it doesn't matter. You've been tapped in to, to have that see your place in God. Ears to hear and eyes to see, he talks about in Revelation. Amen. So you, hallelujah, are a seer, prophetic, anointed person in Jesus' name. Okay. And I just declare your eyes are being opened. Your senses are being opened right now in the name of Jesus. Okay. So progressing forth. Here I am. I'm acknowledging all of these things. And, um, you know, I start going to the conference. Uh, it wasn't even called a conference. It was called a, a transformation summit. And uh, the first day I begin to meet a lot of powerful people from the Hollywood area. Now, Hollywood's not a real big Christian place yet, but <laughs> in Jesus name, it's transforming. But guys, you know, I begin to interact and meet with this, this gentleman who uh, worked with Mel Gibson on the Passion of the Christ. And he talked a lot about the warfare that we go through as we're progressing for things for God, that warfare that's there. Amen. He began to talk about how for so, for so long it looked like there wasn't a breakthrough. But believe it or not, the breakthrough came in Hawaii. They were stopping back through Hawaii on the, on the way back. The Lord put him in touch with one person. And that opened up the cap to go worldwide and have a movement. So we can't stop. Amen. We can't stop. We keep focusing on the Lord and we keep moving by the Lord and not be put down by anything that's going on naturally or that the enemy is trying to pull us down with because God has put us on a path. He's showing us things. Okay. So this is happening. Uh, you know, I get on the elevator <clears throat> with uh, a, a, a producer, a major producer of a movie. I don't recall the name. I, I know it was a well-known movie. But I didn't know her from nothing. Get on the elevator. She befriends me. I have favor from her immediately. You know, she invites me to drive to ride in her car with her over to the summit. Had no idea who this lady was. But God ordained that elevator ride. 
God did that. So many times we're trying to make things happen when we really need to be open to what the Spirit's saying. Amen. So it's important to be in that seer prophetic anointing. Amen. Even in the word, glory to God, to where, you know, um, the rhema word of God, those are eyes and ears in the word come out alive and speak to us. All right. Woo, glory to God. Just praise him. <clears throat> so here we are. We're headed over there. She's sitting on the row with me. She's not in the front. Guys, I was on row three, okay? Rows one and two were reserved. I was on row three. And she's sitting on row three with me. Now, imagine that. See, that is, that is God. That is the favor of God. That is the glory of God. Amen. And, and I just give God glory. So she goes up. She does the her part of the, the summit where they're all talking and speaking. And she had a lot of really amazing things to share. She'd been through a lot also. And that's one thing I want to share with you guys is she'd been through so much. She'd been through so, so much. And that's why we can't get bogged down or tore down. Oh, I'm just seeing y'all's comments. God bless you. Uh, welcome, uh, Jewel and Miss Julia. God bless you guys. Welcome. I just noticed the, uh, the uh, you guys are on here. I have this multi-screen setup thing going on. Praise the Lord. You know, moving deeper in the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. So here I am, and God's unfolding all these things, you know, and I'm really just uh, rejoicing but staying alert to what he is doing, what he's saying. Amen. Now, seers, remember something. Every time you see something, uh, you know, in, in the natural, every time something, you know, is out there happening, it's going to line up with the truth. It's going to line up with the word. Amen. You may not go to the Word and have it line by line in the exact English, but it's the understanding of what the Bible's saying is truth. Those things are going to line up. Amen? Hallelujah. 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 There's, there's a lot of power in what I want to share with you guys tonight. It's just powerful what God's doing. There's a, there's a transformation on, on the... Uh, 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 taking place, actually. Actually, there's a transformation. That's not on the rise. It's taking place as we speak. It's taking place as we speak. So something else I want to share with you guys is there's a transformation going on right now. Just give him glory. Press into that place. Let the Spirit of God speak to you. Boom. All right. So that was, that was day one, you guys. That was day one, all right? So we go through day one. It was a powerful time. I'm rejoicing in the Lord, thanking God for everything that he's doing. And go to the hotel that night. And, um, you know, some warfare tried to rise up. Now, a lot of people can get very discouraged and say, oh, I just don't know what I'm doing wrong. I just don't know, you know, da-da-da, all this stuff. Let me, let me help you real quick. Let me help you. Take a deep breath and say, thank you, Jesus. That's the first thing. Okay, number two, what we want to look at is, are, are there any obvious gates open in our life, runways, doors? Is there anything open that the enemy can come in and out of? Is there anything there that he can come in and out of? And that's one thing we want to really uh, have an awareness of. Now, how do you do that? Well, the first thing is it's obvious. If, if you're caught up in some major sin stuff, you know, get with the elders, amen? Get anointed, get prayer, get deliverance. There's nothing wrong, amen? As you go deeper in God, you're going to go through deliverances, more deliverances. We all are. That's part of going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper because that's where we need to go. Why? There's always more. The other side is, let's say you look at it and you say, well, I've inventoried it. I just can't really see anything going on that's wrong. I'm, I've repented for my sins. Uh, I'm pleading the blood of Jesus over myself and my family. Yeah, I don't have any crazy stuff coming in and out of my house. Da, 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 da. You know, okay. That's when you really also need not to get in with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of God, reveal to me anything at all that may be going on in my life. Maybe it's something in the history of your family. Maybe it's something that's gone on that you're not aware of. But let Holy Spirit reveal it to you. Part of that comes from that just real still place with Him. Amen? Getting still before Him, listening for Him, and letting Him bring in it to you. Amen? Let's say you've gone through this now, and, and there's nothing going on there. He's not revealing anything to you. Maybe He's telling you that, you know, everything's okay. Bam. This is a, a, a place you're at now to where the enemy is, is probably coming at you because you're near a breakthrough. Everybody say, rejoice! You're near a breakthrough. Amen? You're near a breakthrough. There's a breakthrough that's, that's, that's taking place. The enemy's 
frustrated about it because you're progressing. You're going deeper in the things of God. He's trying to shake you up and you're not being shaken. Hallelujah. Because you're on the rock of Christ. Glory to God. That may be it. Amen. Guys, invoke the blood. Invoke the fire. Call upon the angels of the Lord to war over you. Call upon the angels to war over you. Okay. Let's jump back into this now. <clears throat> Moving into uh, day two of this transformation summit. Now today is a, a powerful day. Now I'd already had interaction with a, a multimillionaire out of, uh, well I guess I can say it. I, I told him I wouldn't give too much information. We, we got into some pretty, God really aligned me with a lot of folks with some pretty intimate talks. But this guy, I'll just say he's from Texas. I'll leave it there. I'm not going to say exactly where he's from in Texas, but he's a multimillionaire uh, from Texas. Uh, he's had uh, a lot of inventions and created a lot of businesses from it. A lot of words like that have been spoken over my own life uh, about bringing trillions of dollars into the kingdom of God. This helped me to see how that can come to be. You know, I'm like, God, well, you've got me as an apostle and a prophet, God, but I don't understand, you know, how to do this. It's simple. It's simple. Why? Because when we still ourselves before the Lord, when we listen to him, he begins to pour out what we need. It's our job to journal it. It's our job to let him uh, reveal these things. Amen. And, and we, we're in that relationship. We talk with him about it. Boom, bah. Okay. So I'm talking with this man. We're, we're sharing. You know, he's talking about his Learjet that he came in. Wow, that's, that's amazing. I was like, wow, that's cool. You know, it reaffirmed me for, for Christians and Learjets as well. Why? Learjets are about $4.5 million. Yet here I am talking with a man that clearly is just a man of peace, love, yet you can see the authority on his life and business. And he was uh, not just, you know, give me the two minute treatment. In fact, he had his assistant kind of step back and said, I'm, I'm, I'm talking with this gentleman. They were trying to get him to go and he was, he was enjoying what God was doing. And I respect that. When we take and we put God first, amen, not necessarily a schedule or all this other stuff, but we put God first and we recognize when God's doing something, there's a key there. There's a key there. Glory to God. A big old key. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So we're talking. He's sharing about all this stuff and he's uh, scheduled to come in the next day and, and do his presentation as the last. We go forward. He started intervening with this, this uh, multimillionaire banker out of uh, Georgia, you know, start talking with a lady out of Indonesia. Now, guys, I'm telling you, what I'm about to tell you is going to blow your mind. This lady's out of Indonesia, okay? And she, ha, <laughs> wow, God is so good. She runs a series, a, 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 a series of ho uh, motel, uh, hotels, rather, hotels, very high-end, five-star luxury hotels. You know, the upper of the upper of the upper class. And she she is in charge of getting with the builders and designers, and she makes the decisions of what where they're going to be, what they're going to look like, and so forth. I'm like, this is pretty powerful. You know, this is this is pretty amazing. This is really powerful, you know? So she's sharing about this, and I, I'm really getting into what she's talking about because here again, I see somebody that has no pride. No pride. I see somebody that's just walking in love. Walking in love, but yet there's an authority there. So in my mind, it's starting to really rack up. Like these people, they're not all hanging out together every day. They're from all over the country. Yet I see so many similarities in them. Yet they're not behind a pulpit. You know, they're not out ministering every day. They're very focused on what God's doing. Why? Because they're kingdom financiers. They're kingdom financiers. God has purposed them to fund major moves of God. Why do I like that? Here's why I like that. So many times today in the models we see in a lot of um, churches and, and, so, and so forth, we see people that are controlled by man and man's money. In other words, they're afraid to say something because they'll get up out of, out of the seat and they'll leave the service and you know, if they don't say the right things, it could affect the financial flow. You see, I've never really liked that. That's one reason I don't get into the flow of that myself. I've got several funders for my ministry 
other people that send stuff here and there, you know, through the internet website, through the PO box, things like that. But not everybody gets me and that's okay. Not everybody has to get you. Just make sure you're walking humbly and upright with the Lord. Amen. And in love. All right. So all these people are sharing and this is going on. Let me tell you something. Whoo. We get to the point where they have an open forum, you know, where they're up there and they're doing a, a, um, a forum, you know, there's, there's about four of them sitting up on the stage and they begin to be questioned by a, uh, somebody asking questions. And as they begin to ask them questions, the common thing that came forth was, and <laughs> the first thing they did in the day, the first thing they did in the day, was to wake up, and this was the crazy part, and spend at least two hours with God before they did anything else. Before they checked their phone, before they went and looked at financials, before they went and looked at other markets, they spent two hours with the Lord daily. And I'm talking about first thing, first fruits, first place with God. I mean, powerful, powerful, not other stuff. Now, guys, these are major decision makers. These are major decision makers. Some of you seen that TV show with the guy who owns all the hotels and all the restaurants and all that stuff, you know, he owns most of Galveston Island and has a lot of Vegas and all this kind of stuff. Unfortunately, he's not a Christian yet. But guys, these guys are on that scale, if not, not more. And their first stop in the day because they want, they know their source is there with the Lord. That spoke to me. That should speak to each of us. That needs to be our first fruits, our first place with God every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we were in worship, I saw some of them out in, in the audience, you know, down on their knees, worshiping God, more toward the back, not trying to be seen. <laughs> you see where their success comes from. It's that connection with God. So I asked you earlier, you know, seers and seers and, and Christian millionaires, what do they have um, in common to their destiny? And that is it, guys. It's our it's our place of coming to God for our direction, for our information. We get in the word daily. We need the word daily, but we've got to be in the spirit as well. If we're not in the spirit as well receiving, we're not getting what we need to get. You've got to get it from his word. I mean, the rhema of his word. Let the word come to life. That's where we have ears to hear what the Spirit's saying, okay? That's a part of getting it out of the word. <clears throat> but the flip side of this is getting out in the Spirit and letting him show you. That's a part of this, guys. Being aware. Having that smelling of sense, you know. I smell roses, the rose of Sharon. He'll begin, he's going to give you vocabulary of what that means in your life. Maybe you feel somebody touch you. Sometimes, you know, you'll feel somebody touch you up here or on the shoulder. I have an angel, angel touch me on the shoulder. You know, da-da-da-da-da. There's so many things that mean things to me that may not be the same for you. But you're going to gather that vocabulary over time. You're going to gather the meaning of these things over time. And that's the beauty of it. That is the beauty of it. Guys, I hope you're encouraged. Um... You know, God is, is doing something powerful in the hour. He's doing something powerful with each of us. And I want to encourage you, you know, whether you're an office seer, you know, the, the Bible says that not every, not every prophet is a seer, or not every seer, I'm sorry, not every prophet is a seer, amen, but every seer is a prophet. Now, that's in the place of, um, there's an office in that place. But then there's this also aspect of being prophetic and seeing, having ears to see, amen. Hello. Wow, that was wild. Having eyes to see and ears to hear. Those are both seeing, but in a spiritual way. So I want to encourage you today. Amen. It, it, be who God's called you to be. If you're, in that, if you're in that office and that's all you do, that's your job. That's what you've been called to do. Amen. That's, that's what he has you doing. If you're in this place, you know, interoperating, you've been called to see and hear. You've been called Amen. There's a prophetic gift in the spirit. Amen. In Revelation, we see, we see, we see over and over. Ears to hear 
and eyes to see. Those who have ears to hear and eyes to see. Eyes to see. Be encouraged tonight and know this, that the Lord Jesus Christ is large and in charge. He's large and in charge. God has got everything in the palm of his hand. Amen. He knows what he's doing. Trust him and begin to open up more. Take those times of meditation when you're laying there on your bed or you're sitting in your comfortable chair or wherever your place is. Get alone with the Lord. Put those distractions out of the way and begin to go deeper in the spirit. You know, I told you guys earlier on about looking at Revelation 4, for example, John the Revelator. Looking and, you know, when we first see it, we see the door opens in heaven. And I encourage you, you know, close your eyes and begin to look up there. Look up there in the, in, in the spirit. Amen. In your imagination, your, your mind's eye. Begin to look up. Well, Lord, Holy Spirit, show me what does that look like? It's, it's an exercise of going into the spirit, going into that seer place. Amen. Guys, be encouraged. Work with these things. Let him take you deeper and deeper. And one thing is where you've already gone before, you can instantly go back to and move forward in. So journal these things down, draw them out on paper, you know, sketch them out. You don't have to be a world-class artist. Be who you are in the Lord. Sketch it out. You can go back and see it. Amen. <clears throat> I want to bless you guys. Just know I love you. Uh, you know, if you've not had a chance to uh, to visit over yet, I want to have, uh, ask you to come by and, and visit us on our website. It's a seerprofit.community. That's seerprofit.community. And we've got great things uh, that are growing on that site. And also over on the Facebook page, and you just uh, type in Seer Profit Community uh, in the search bar, and it's a group there. If you want to grow in your seer uh, prophetic anointing, we invite you to come over there and join us. And likewise, if you want to come over and, and visit me, if you want to come over and uh, check me out on the website as well, visit me at richardbsimmons.com. I love you guys. I'm so thankful that you joined me today. I always enjoy these times where we come together and share. And uh, any questions or comments you have, I invite you, leave them below in the, in the comments area here. Love you guys. The Lord bless you and keep you. I pray you were blessed by this today, that this will help increase your faith and just take you to new dimensions and new heights in the Lord. Amen. New dimensions and new heights in the Lord. Um, one thing I want to share with you guys that, that came up just a little bit earlier, if you uh, I want to share with you guys real quick, is out of Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> guys, Faith is a big part, amen, of our Christian walk, but it's also a big part of going deeper in the Lord, amen? And um, in, in Hebrews 11, chapter 10, I'm reading out of the Passion Translation. It says, his eyes of faith. Everyone say, eyes of faith. That's right, his eyes of faith. Guys, this is a spiritual eyesight, this is a spiritual eyesight. Do you see what I'm saying? Ears to hear and eyes to see. This is a spiritual eyesight. His eyes of faith were set on the city with unshakable foundations. Wow. Set our eyes on the things of God. Let us not be shakable. It says with unshakable foundations. Watch this. Whose architect and builder is God himself. Guys, <clears throat> faith motivated Abraham in that time. Faith motivated Abraham in that time to do something that everybody thought he was crazy for doing. Everybody thought he was crazy for doing that. Clearly he wasn't. Clearly he was far from crazy. I invite you to go deeper in God. I invite you to go deeper in the Spirit of God. I invite you to a whole new dimension in the Spirit where He can reveal far greater things to you and help you not only get through day to day by His direction, but to end well in your destiny. Amen? Hallelujah. All right, guys. God bless you. Thanks for joining me. I love you all.
and I'll see you again soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.